You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. This episode was recorded live at my new almost completed studio here in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to talk about quantum biology and quantum technologies. And part of me doesn't want to do an episode like this because I've seen quantum toothpaste. I've seen so much quantum marketing nonsense that I have a little bit of a a visceral response to it. However, you can get a PhD in quantum biology. And we know that enzymes work most likely via quantum tunneling. And we know that microtubules, which are a core part of how our subcellular components work, are driven based on quantum biology. And very recently, we received, I would say, perfect and and very hard to argue with proof that we are quantum systems. Because for the first time ever, a biologist and a quantum physicist partnered, and they looked at proton behavior in the brain. And it turns out that proton spin changes throughout the brain with every heartbeat, which is very strong evidence that we are quantum maybe computers, I would, I would argue, but certainly quantum systems in any way, which means that the quantum realm is fertile territory for biohacking. In other words, if we can affect our quantum resonance or whatever the right word for that is, then we can change how we show up in the world or maybe how the world shows up for us. We don't even necessarily know all of that. Uh, It also provides an explanation for some things that are hard to explain. In fact, some things that piss me off from the history of me becoming the guy who started biohacking. I did all the stuff that was supposed to work. You know, I exercised 702 hours over the course of 18 months and didn't lose any weight. And I got on magazine covers and I made millions of dollars and I was still miserable. And it was only after after I'd exhausted the Western stuff that I went to Nepal and Tibet and started studying meditation and acupuncture and all the things that weren't supposed to work, but actually did work. And I've been looking for a mechanism for why those things work. And it's probably quantum. And that's why we're going to talk about quantum biology. Um, Our guest today is returning to the show with a ton more evidence from when he was on in the early episode, I think 809. His name is Philip von Holzendorf failing. Try and say that twice. (laughs) Philip, I'm going to call you Philip. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on. It's an honor. Last time you were on, we talked about your background as a successful tech entrepreneur, kind of like me, who then went down this path of energy medicine and ended up starting Leela Quantum, which is a company who makes tech that I use on a daily basis, stuff that I actually travel with uh, and just, you know, full Full disclosure here, I travel with this thing, like the TSA is like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's, it's a stand for my cell phone. And <laughs> they don't have to know. Um, and there's pendants and cards that I use as well. If you'd have told me 20 years ago I was going to be doing that, I'd be like, seriously, like, it, 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 am I joining a cult? But I think there's enough evidence. So I, I want to I first have you define quantum energy versus what I just talked about with proton spin and all and see if there's a difference. So what is quantum energy? I mean, it's in the name of your company, but what is it? Mm -hmm. Quantum energy is the energy behind the matter. And that's kind of like the first thing that we need to understand. I always reference Tesla, who said, if you really want to understand the secrets of the universe, you need to think in terms of energy and frequency. And if the listeners can just let that sink in for a moment, because that's where the real truth is, and that's where the real life also is. So now that we said that, we have these meat bags, right? Now, I think we all know that we're mainly water on the physical level, which is already hard to understand, right? How can it just be over 90% water? That's like a tough concept. I have a friend who's 90% vodka. Is that... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know someone like that too. (laughs) So... uh, but, you know, it's, it's something that's not really that something we think about, but it's, it's still true. And then behind all the matter, there is mainly energy. So we're actually just over 99% space, right? And so the energy behind the matter, that's the quantum energy. That's how we define it, at least. And then that's the same energy that we have in each of our cells. 
Each cell has a quantum energy field, and that's how the cells communicate instantly and constantly at all times. And uh, that is the energy that we were able to harness and concentrate um, in a fashion never done before. And that's, that's kind of the breakthrough, that basically we have such a powerful source of this concentrated quantum energy that we can tap into that and then promote changes um, and betterings of even our physiological system, but it really starts on the energetic because we have a physical body, but we also have an energy body. Some listeners may be, oh yeah, uh, do we really be, I can't touch it. Yeah, you can't touch it, but you can actually feel it and you can know it and you can get there. Can, can you measure it with some quantifiable tool? Yeah, I mean, there are even medical devices out there in, in Russia and Europe, um, whether it's the BioWell or certain other devices that can... And Energy for Life makes one. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a variety of things, curly and photography. Yeah. And something that, that helped me, or helped to prepare me for this, when I was 14 in New Mexico at the time, you could get a driver's license. So maybe that was a bit early because I did total the car, but hey, it was legal. So uh, when I was 50 and I said, I clearly need to have a radar detector. So I bought one against my parents' advice and I would drive around town and like, oh my God, I'm driving through all these invisible fields. I can't see them, but I know they're here. So this thing would beep every time I would come near a grocery store and every time I came near a cop. And I, I realized the map I see of the world is, you know, colors and lights and stuff like that. But then... I was also driving through an invisible world where there's like, oh, that's a hot spot. There's nothing there. Yeah. And I didn't feel radar. <laughs> Most people don't. Uh, but that didn't mean it wasn't there. And I think that prepared my mind to say, all right, I can accept that there are things that I don't see in the world. Um, and for most people, you don't see x-rays, but you believe your bones are in there, right? Well, exactly. And we use our phones and all of that, right? That's another <clears throat> thing. And then, you know, if you turn on the radio and you just turn the button for a little bit and suddenly you have a different channel and then another channel and another channel and another channel and all that is all there you just need to tune in and that's kind of the same thing with with our biofield also that we if we can tune in we can also recognize it and you know you've you've mentioned um Tibet and, and also healers yeah. and, and, and all that. You know, there, there are pretty gifted people out there that have really special abilities, but the truth is everyone can get there and can do these things. Maybe, you know, there's talents, right? There's obviously really great talents in tennis. Not, and Not everyone's Michael Jordan, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not everyone's Michael Jordan, but everyone can do some of these things, but most people have forgotten about it because we kind of live in this box of the five senses. And, and even in the five senses, we're almost like not even noticing those anymore, right? That's just the nature of the world we live in currently because it's so stressful, right? There's so many things we need to take care of, so many fears we have and all that. And we lose track of the most natural things to us, like the senses, but then also feeling really all biofield. And, and our technology actually helps with that, interestingly. Uh, we, we will get into the physical, of course, and the, the real hard evidence and the studies, but it, it really starts on the energetic, and that's what people need to understand. You said every cell in the body has its own quantum energy field. Yep. How do you know that each cell has its own field? Because you can actually see it energetically. With what, with your eyes or with your body or with like a microscope? How, how are you seeing a field if, on a cell? If you're one of those super gifted people or if you've really trained hard to see on that granular level, then you can notice that. And um, I'll tell you later about an ATP uh, um, production uh, study that was done here oh, just okay. lately and then we'll get into that too. It's, the, this is something else that, that's really important and as a you know, former atheist then agnostic and then you know I, I come from a family of you know PhD scientists people who you know my, my grandmother I think still subscribes to the skeptic inquirer which is Snopes for very old people. You know, that, that nothing is real. You know, if it's not my way, it's no, it's, it's like the angry, the angry skeptics voice, which is no better than the, the mindless acceptance of everything. Like it, it, you, scientists are curious, they're not skeptical and they're not positive, like we're, we're neutral. So coming from all that, we know that there are some people 
who can see more colors than most humans. They actually have uh, a, a better ability to see it, a richer set of colors. We know some people are colorblind. We know some people are super tasters. And we can accept those things, but yeah. wait, if you put three super tasters in a room, they will have a different experience and it will match versus the rest of us. And it's been my experience that there are people who are energetically either better trained or more powerful or who knows, maybe they're aliens or genetic mutants. I, I, I haven't done the science to know why they can do it. But if I have three or five different people who all claim to have these abilities and then you put them in a room and you know, what do you see on this person? And they all see the same thing that a normal person doesn't see. It doesn't mean that they're all crazy. It means that they have developed an ability. And those abilities are well documented in traditional Chinese medicine, ancient Russian stuff, um, any of the shamanic lineages, and they all have different names for it and all that. So you guys, you just have to think about this and say, okay, this is something that humans are capable of, at least some of us. Another guy who's been on the show, uh, John Amaral, um, who's also been on stage at my biohacking conference, he works on me in the evening so I can be at full energy the whole time. And sometimes I'm like laying on his chiropractic table and he's two feet away from me and he does something and my whole body's twitching. <sighs> I don't know how to explain that. I'm not choosing to twitch. It just happens. So this stuff, I, I would say, even if you're the most like, Dave, what are you talking about? You just went into the, the realm of quantum woo. No, I went into the realm of curious scientific person. Uh, so just open open your mind a little bit to what we're saying here and be curious about it because you're going to hear about some evidence, enough evidence that's worth a whole new show to talk about it. You mentioned ATP. Tell me what you learned about Leela Quantum and ATP. So, and there's tons more studies that we'll get into that one, but the ATP study was done just a bit three, four weeks ago here yeah. in the U.S., um, Bio, bio, biochemistry lab, and and where was the lab? Like at a university or a private one? Uh, in Arizona. Okay. Uh, university lab. Okay. And they, the assumption was that so we know um, that the blocks here, for example, they increase the energy uh, in the room, and if you put your hands in there, then you feel that you get more energy. Actually, you tap into this energy so source. And so you actually have more energy available, which is almost like you walk through a desert, mm -hmm. you don't have water, and then suddenly someone gives you water and you drink water. This moment of, you know, that's on an energetic level pretty much what happens. So now people can hopefully picture that better. And then the question was, does that also stimulate ATP production on top of that? So not that only that the cells get more energy from the outside, if you will, but that they also produce more. And actually it was now proven in a randomized double blind study with thousands of cells um, um, that the ATP production the first two hours increases each and every time when you put your hand inside a Leela quantum yeah block. Or when you're already in the field and, and and so what do you mean in the field what does that look like so we're in the field now of these blocks like this is like the most powerful block um and i i have this in the center of my house so you're saying i put my hand in the middle of it for two hours of better atp production um, you could do that, but if you're just, just sitting, sitting next, next to, to it, it would already be enough. It's wow. just the, the level of strength basically is different when you're just sitting there or when you're putting your hands in there just because the field is stronger inside sure. than outside. That's pretty much how it works. And yeah, and it, it, it happened repeatedly, demonstrably, verifiably. What, it, what percentage of ATP increase were you saying? Um, it was between six to 10% increase. Wow. And how are you measuring ATP? Um, I actually can't tell you that because we're not the ones measuring that. It's the, oops, the it's, the, it's the lab doing it and we haven't gotten the written up study yet. Okay. But once we have that, we know the results. Already. And you'll publish the full study? It'll definitely be published, of course. Yeah, yeah, it'll be put on the website and everything and how they exactly do it. But it's, it's a guy that pretty much does not, nothing else. So they look at all these different cell cultures and the next a study will be on wound healing, actually. Okay. And yeah, so that, that's, that's interesting. It's also very interesting for athletes, obviously. And also if you, you know, want to kickstart, you, you don't feel good and you want to kickstart your own healing process, obviously. So that's very good to know. But that was um, 
the latest uh, study that we just added, but there's tons more. And the most interesting set of studies actually from my perspective are the lifeblood analysis studies. Okay. So you know a lot about dark field microscopy, I know that, but the listeners may not. Sure. So um, it's an amazing method where you can take a microscope and you look at the actual blood in real time and you can see the blood cells in a magnified fashion and they're illuminated. So you can literally see your red blood cells, your white blood cells, you can see parasitic load and things like that. It, it, it looks like this. The dark field microscopy was widely used in the US as well, but 20 years ago, or about 20 years ago, they started to charge every practitioner that wants to use it for diagnostic purposes $100,000 a year. The company who invented dark field? No, actually that came from authorities. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the CDC. Um, but I'm, you know, I don't want to bet on that right now. It's, yeah. it's one of those authorities, I think, that charged the $100,000 per year. It's sort of like a license fee. Um, and that's what you do if you want things to go away. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's still widely used in Europe, in Russia, and in many other places. I had it about 25 years ago. And, and they're like, Dave, look, look at how your red blood cells are all stacked. Uh, and basically, you're at high risk of, of clotting. And it was funny because I had a lab test that was looking at my clotting rate. Um, from a Western lab that had told me the same thing, and this you know, person at a health food store looked at looked at it in the back of the store and said this. So it it did correlate. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's a it's a massive tool to diagnose overall health and also several specific things, and it's frankly the only tool that gives you the chance to really look at the blood and see what happens in real time, and then you can introduce things like Wi-Fi or you know you can take substances, for example, and you see what, what happens. So now we started off initially with first just some testing, right? So we had someone tested and then they took our product and then every time the results were better. When you say took your product, they, they sat in the field around a Lila quantum block or they wore the pendant or carried a card or something? Exactly. We tested pretty much all of those products and in, in each case we had a significantly positive result. But then Positive That's, result looking at live blood is in the blood flowed better and there was less crud floating in it or something? Exactly. And, and um, um, bear with me, I'll get more yeah. into that. Uh, but what I want to say is like one of the attack points for people with dark field microscopy uh, is often, well, you could just choose a good time to do like one test and then choose another time you do another test and then that's what you show people and that's not really scientific. And I would actually agree. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were obviously honest about these first tests and saw the results, but we realized that we can't really go out like that and say, well, we took two photographs and you know, here you go. So we actually started to give our products to scientists that you know, have done this for decades. In the US, it's Dr. Beverly Rubik. She's an ace, or probably one of the best in the world to do these things. And then the Besa Institute in Europe, and they did randomized placebo-controlled double-blind and single-blind studies to really rule out any placebo effect and to show the, the actual results, um, what happens every time and each time. And what you see is, it can reverse stage one and stage two of blood clotting within just 10 minutes. And it did that in 100% of the cases. So we yet have to find a single person where that doesn't work. Um, it uh, improves the red blood cells and the oxygenation in the blood. So um, red blood cells usually should be quite separated and look relatively around. So if you see the pictures online, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Even someone that doesn't know much about this will recognize the difference. And uh, the white blood cell activity and motility uh, increased in, in every time. And as we know, that's directly linked to the immune system, right? Mm -hmm. That's part of our force. If, if that is paralyzed, we're in bad shape. And so the way the studies were conducted was that the people got tested with no Wi-Fi on, and then actually they turned Wi-Fi on, and then they got tested again, and you see a significant uh, um, worsening of all the blood activity relatively quickly. Then they leave Wi-Fi on, and then they introduce our device, and all of the blocks were tested, and there were studies with people putting their hands in. There were also studies with people just being in the proximity of it so that we can really talk about both. And then, then you see these significant 
uh, results. And Wi-Fi is then still on while they use the device, and suddenly all those effects uh, wow. are neutralized. Literally all of those, and in, in most cases, actually, the situation was better than at the first, very first test. And so that's quite significant. There are some listeners who still believe that Wi-Fi doesn't do anything to your biology uh, because it doesn't heat you up like a microwave. Um, there are at least 500 studies that show that that is not the case. However, especially in the US, you don't hear much about those, but every study funded by the industry shows that it's harmless and every independent study shows that it's harmful. So you might uh, just consider that there's something going on here because this isn't just a few people in tinfoil hats. This is a lot of really good scientists. And one of the things that highlighted this to me, we might have talked about this in the last episode. I, I'm not sure. I, I've mentioned it once in the last thousand episodes. But the guy who wrote the first patent for 802.11b, the first Wi-Fi in, in existence, uh, I met him at a coffee shop called Red Rock uh, in Mountain View, California. And he said, Dave, I took our million dollar lab test gear and I pointed it at myself and look at all this stuff. I think there's, there's diagnostic data in here. I was all, was, you know, real excited about it. And I mean, this has to be, had to be sometime in the late nineties, maybe the year 2000. And I was like, wow, that was another thing that kind of blew my mind and maybe prepared me to be willing to have a conversation with you and to learn about the stuff and to just accept that something's happening. And so if you can believe the supposition that Wi-Fi may have subtle negative effects on humans, and, and I just consider that to be a fact at this point. And not everyone's affected the same way, but it's generally not beneficial, except it's beneficial in that you can you know, get access to information anywhere. And so there, there's pros to it, but the cons, you want to mitigate them. This is a way to mitigate the cons. Correct. So we have by now um, five randomized sham controlled double blind and single blind studies just in regards to looking at that. That how um, the quantum affects the, the, the Wi-Fi. Blood, the blood okay. and always in connection with Wi-Fi. Um, so on top of the regular effect, you know, what does it do okay. um, before and after? You know, we check and, Wi-Fi. And to use it, you don't have to put your Wi-Fi router in it or anything. You literally just have it near you. Exactly. Yeah, that's the easiest way to use it, frankly. But if you want to have faster results and even stronger results, you put your hands in there. So that's what people do at home also every now and then, you know, that they just put their hands in there to get like an extra charge. But that's just one. And by the way, so we haven't found anything, any effect uh, that is physically visible and energetically visible from Wi-Fi that wasn't completely neutralized by our tech. Uh, so the blood is the one thing. The other one was heart rate variability studies. Um, then we had Killian photography type of uh, studies as well that were done. And then the BESA studies uh, in Europe, the BESA Institute is the largest um, testing research institute, which is independent in Europe for a biosystem analysis. And what they do is they measure the cellular voltage in the different organs. They can uh, measure energy levels on the acupuncture points and things like that. It's an advanced Decavol method. And they also tested, they tested actually our devices in an electric car. It was a Tesla. And we, we all know Teslas and, and, and other electric cars, they're full of uh, EMF, right? I mean, there's way more EMF in Apparently, there. Apparently, Teslas are lower than Priuses quite a lot because of the location of the batteries. That could be the case, okay. but they're still all a, a lot higher than um, a regular car. Absolutely. And and then they gave people um, a tablet and a phone at the same oh, time God. to really blast them and then used our tech and it was able to neutralize it all. So it's it's powerful stuff. And as you said, you know, the, the EMF, we don't see it. It's still there. You know, I was a VP at T-Mobile, so I um, kind of know what I'm talking about uh, in regards <laughs> to EMFs. And, but it has these benefits too, right? So I'm not proposing a world where we shut off uh, all the towers now, right? That would be inconvenient for a lot of things we do in life. And I think the, the trick is to really mitigate it in a way where we're not affected and we can still use what, it. What if you had a Leela quantum block like sitting on top of a cell tower? Would that just take care of everything the cell tower does? We actually haven't tested that. Uh, uh, I think at some point we can talk about some other ways that we have in order to 
uh, get to that problem. So yeah. <laughs> you may hear that we have a solution for that, but uh, but we we haven't tested that. But it could be that the the infinity block, for example, would be powerful enough. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a possibility, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> so and and so this is the really fascinating stuff, right? Because we're talking energetics, and you gave this great intro, right? Because this it's it's where humanity is right now. Yeah. That's where I see it. Um, a matter of fact, and it, it really humbles me that we're even having this conversation here and that we can openly talk about these things and come with hard evidence. And it doesn't really stop there. So what actually happened in uh, at your biohacking conference in Orlando, uh, live on stage, we did an experiment because we had heard from several people that if they charge foods that they're allergic to uh, in the infinity block for like five, six minutes, then they could consume the substance without an allergy reaction. We had heard That's that from crazy. Yeah, from I haven't people. tried this. I got to try this with eggs. Well, we tell everyone don't try this yet, please. Well, on your own risk, you can, of course, but um, really at your own risk because we don't know enough about it yet. But I'll I'll tell you more about this yeah. because it's it's for me right now the most fascinating research field that we're in um, with these blocks. So then there was this guy that has a, a crab meat, uh, allergy, avocado, honey, and he tested it over and over again. First he thought actually his allergy was gone completely, but then he tested it without charging and he still <laughs> had the allergy, so wow. it was kind of terrible. But then uh, over and over again it worked when he charges. So we did this experiment live on stage there, mm -hmm. and they put crab meat in his arm, and he got this instant reaction, all got red and you know it, it got very itchy and all that and the same crap meat they put life on stage uh, in the infinity block mm -hmm. it was like in a circus um, okay. and then after that they took it out put it in his other arm no reaction right wow. so now and then we've heard this from other people gluten sensitivities dairy sensitivities a guy that could never even drink a drop of lemon juice without getting totally sick he was able to consume some lemon juice now after that again don't try this yet there's more research to be done but we have a clinic in germany now it's a pretty famous european clinic that's specialized in in allergies and some other things people even from london and and other um, countries fly over there they have a fifty thousand dollar device uh, with which they can test allergy responses mm -hmm. And they did a pilot study with our tech, and they found out that after three minutes of charging the foods, all the foods that they tested, and we told them four minutes is actually what you need to do, they did just three, they showed an allergy reduction between 65 to 95% in all cases. Wow. We're assuming at this point it's going to be somewhere closer to 70 to 100% when they charge it four minutes, and that study is currently ongoing, will run for probably three, four months. So how long would that effect last? Because here's my thought. For people allergic to cats, you could saran wrap your cat inside a quantum block because most cats could fit inside one of these, right? And you just have to hold it in there for four minutes. <laughs> Air holes I'm talking about, right? But then would your cat like permanently be non-allergenic? <laughs> You well, can, you can fit a chihuahua in there too, I guess. That would be an interesting. So we actually have animals that go into these larger blocks. We have some larger blocks yeah. too, where they actually naturally gravitate to. But that one I can't really comment on because that would be a different type of allergy. Okay. We haven't done any tests in regards to that really. So this is something where you consume a substance. Okay. And and by the way, it, it doesn't stop there. Like, you know, one of my unhealthy habits that I haven't been able to get rid of is I love chocolate and I love Why great cakes healthy? and desserts. Chocolate's good for you um, in multiple studies. Yeah, you know. Um, 100 grams a day makes you live longer. <laughs> Seriously, that, that's what the numbers say. Yeah, you know, chocolate mousse and all these things. Yeah, that, that might be a problem. Uh, but, but anyway, you know, these things are just, uh, it enriches your life on, on yeah. a different level at like least. Like bacon and, and chocolate, I yeah. got it. And so what they test, so you cannot be allergic to sugar, but you can have a stress response, yeah. which most everyone has to some degree at least. And... If you put sugar or any sugary substances in the block and charge them, they were able to also show a 75 to 85 percent reduction in stress response. So their cortisol didn't go up, although sometimes sugar lowers cortisol if you're in a cortisol or in a in a glucose deficient state. Interesting. So you're saying that your blood sugar doesn't go up as much. 
So I don't know the details of that because we literally also just heard about this, that the clinic found that out oh, the stress the response was, okay. um, was able to be reduced by 75 to 85%. And again, more studies are needed now to validate that. There is something called the cell danger response, which is behind a lot of allergies and just a lot of biological dysregulation and just falling out of equilibrium. So it would actually follow that if your water was structured better, uh, that likely your cell danger response would just have a higher threshold to get yeah. triggered. So I, I could see a mechanism for that. Yeah. Uh, that would just be water structure based. Yeah, yeah that's it cool. Could very well be. All right. Um, there's no chips in this thing, in, in the Lele uh, Quantum. I actually have an intention taped to the bottom of this. Uh, and so I know people put pictures of friends who are sick and all that. So I have an intention in there on taped in. And there's no active parts. It doesn't move. It doesn't have a battery. I don't have to plug it in. Um, how do you make these things? So that's a good observation, of course. And that's probably the first thing that blows people's minds because we're so used to something that we need to plug in. There needs to be a battery or something. The fact is, if we added a battery or electricity or magnetic brute force, it wouldn't work the way it does because it would constantly destabilize the field. And then it's like, as if you hit me in the back uh, every two seconds, you know, yeah. then I really have an uncomfortable life. And that's pretty much the same for, for a quantum field like that. Um, so the fact that it's not plugged in, um, doesn't mean there is an energy which we can prove with all of these studies and a lot of different things and people can feel it and you you know people would even feel a tingling in their hands well people and, use crystals that aren't plugged in like like, like you, if you're energetically sensitive or trained and i am i mean you you can this, these aren't particularly subtle though <laughs> like they're strong enough that people who are new new to that sort of thing can feel them but I, it's I mean, hard for the mind do, I, do I, you put them in like a, a crystal chamber are you like shooting with lasers like, like what why isn't this just like some metal like recycled aluminum cans or something with like little pipes like, like what do you do that's special well because then it just wouldn't work um i mean the material really isn't the most important. It is important to some degree, but we could make this out of gold, for example. Yeah. It may work even better, but it would be not affordable for is us. Is this gold plated? It doesn't look like gold. It's anodized aluminum? Yeah, probably. it's golden anodized aluminum and then yeah. sandblasted um, for various reasons, because actually the aluminum frequency is completely neutralized and yeah. it's, um, it's not too heavy, which is yeah. a good thing for shipping and for people to actually move it. Um, and it looks good and it holds the energy really, really well. Uh, and it doesn't, doesn't mess with the quantum field in any way. The interesting thing about aluminum is that it's, it holds an incredible amount of energy in the form of heat. You know, a small piece of aluminum that's heated up will melt a lot more ice than a small piece of lead that's heated up even. Even though you think lead is denser, but no, aluminum has, it does a great job of storing energy. But Okay, so you have aluminum that's gold anodized, but anyone can gold anodize and sandblast aluminum. What's, what do you do that's special for these things? Yeah, absolutely. It wouldn't do anything if it's not charged. And that's frankly what we do in these studies, that we have these sham devices that look physically the same, but one is not charged and the other one is charged. And then you see these so significant how, how differences. How do you charge them? Is there like a band of elves that charge these? Like, like what, <laughs> yes. you know, Give me something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, you have the New Mexico elves. I know those guys. Have you ever asked Coca-Cola for their recipe? Uh, I, <laughs> but we charge each individual plate. So that's important, obviously. We charge each individual plate uh, with a specific method that we can't disclose. Um, and we, we had thought about patenting it. So we have design patents and all this stuff, right? But we, um, the actual method we would have had to disclose in the patent mm. itself and we thought that was actually too risky to do yeah because um, everyone else would, will just steal it anyway but yeah. we have so we have a team of very special and gifted people healers uh, you know not 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 doctors but um healer practitioners um and a team of scientists and so with them together we developed the actual technology at first and how exactly we did it, you know, then, you know, I really need to stop there, but it's, it's, it's a team effort in that sense. And you know, how long did it take? Um, well, I think we worked on it for eight months in straight. Okay. And how big was this team? Like a dozen people or something? We have a network of, I, I think 
six healers, okay. and then we have two, three scientists that, that work on a regular basis with us. And one of the healers is Roman Hafner. Uh, people can, uh, can look him up. Uh, he, he's called the Wunderkind in Europe. He was born with the ability to see each and every frequency on a super granular level. Um, and already as an 11-year-old, he was on stage in front of 300 people and they had all issues and he would tell them why they had the issues and how to fix the issues. Mm -hmm. He was called by doctors that had outtreated patients or patients where they had no clue what they had. And they called okay. him up and he would just tell them, well, they got this because he can see your heartbeat and, and all these right. things. Um, so this is the type of ability. So we're not talking about some Reiki dude across the street. Uh, we're talking about like, you know. The, you're, you're outside Santa Fe, so that's pretty much everyone. Okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, and then there's the signs to it. But, but we really work from from uh, with a different cadence than most other company you, you usually you develop a product and you see if it works and the trial and error and all of that and then at some point you, you figure out these things and then you see what they do and so we can develop something relatively quickly like a frequency for example that that is done in in a very very fast manner and then we can already assess what the frequency will do and then we go into validation and into the scientific testing. So the actual development process is usually relatively quick. So if we have new ideas popping in, then we can follow up relatively quickly. Okay. Uh, it sounds to me like, like the most unique thing is that you found one of the rare humans who can see stuff that most people can't see. And one thing, Maybe Roman is just crazy, and he's since he was you know eleven years old has just been able to con large groups of people. He could be the best men, the best mentalist on earth, but that would have to be like a past life thing because eleven year olds can't be mentalists because they just don't have enough time to learn that stuff, right? So, uh, and I have several friends who are the same way. They're they're born special. I just interviewed um, Guru Dev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar at his place in L.A. and. You know, when he was four, he recited the entire Bhagavad Gita. Four-year-olds don't do that unless they came in with that knowledge. Exactly. Like, that's just kind of how it is. And I asked him about it, right? So I believe that there are some people who, I don't know, probably past lives explain it the best, but people who just have different abilities. Uh, but there are other people who probably say, well, he's from Saturn or wherever. I, okay, like, like whatever. I, we don't have to know why, but we know that there are people who can do this. And having someone like that who's helping to, to look at what works and what doesn't using their unique ability, like the ability to see more colors or whatever, um, that's a neat way of applying science. You just have an unusual measurement device, which happens to be a human. Uh, and I would have said complete, like I would have screamed bullshit from the rooftops 20 years ago. I've, I just know too many people Me who too. can do that stuff, right? I mean, you're, you're a VP from T-Mobile. <laughs> if you're curious and you're scientific, you do find that there are some people like, how did you possibly do that? And they sometimes say, I don't know. And other times, like, I tapped into the quantum energy field and I asked Archangel Michael and, I don't know, you know, each one has their own method and maybe they're all the same method. They just have different names. It actually doesn't matter. Like, like you have someone with those abilities and so you were able to tune whatever your tech is that I'm still curious about. And I respect you, you don't want to tell me and you don't want to tell everyone listening because you, know, you have a business, it's all good. Um, I do think though your stuff works because uh, I travel with the small travel quantum block and you should have one of your quantum cards as well. Uh, I'm even incorporating some of this into 40 years of Zen uh, because it, it appears to give you an unfair advantage. So if you can get six to 10% more ATP when you're doing the most difficult brain training possible, you'll actually be able to enter altered states that you can't get without enough energy. And if you're you know, pushing it in your career or you're staying up all night with a sick kid, it doesn't matter. That six to 10% extra ATP translates into more energy that can be used for folding protein, that can be used for sleep quality, can be used for exertion, can be used for creation, for meditation. So it's like, it's, it's kind of a free upgrade and you, you don't have to do anything, but just have it near you. How close to you does it have to be to really make a difference? So the measurable field um, of a regular infinity block is about a kilometer. And we say about 500 meters, which is maybe 1,500 feet roughly in radius, it can neutralize EMF. So just someone in your neighborhood nearby has to have one. 
yeah, and that, that's for like a normal situation. If you have a house that's right next to a 5G tower, then that may be a little bit different, you know, then the radiuses of the EMF mitigation may be smaller. That's yeah. just something, you know, we haven't tested each scenario sure. that's possible. Uh, but in general, that's about the case. Then this guy here has a radius of about 150 meters and maybe 75 this, this meters. This guy's the small, the smallest block, that's the one I travel, travel with. Travel yeah, block. I put that next to my bed in hotel rooms where it's always um, an EMF disaster. 75 uh, meters, which is, you know, what is that? Uh, 250 yeah. feet, more or less uh, EMF mitigation. And then we have the small quantum block, which is the weakest, but for a reason, because you can do some other fun stuff like copying frequencies, neutralizing. Do I have that one? Isn't um, that? No, that's you. Not it. I don't have you, one. Yeah, no, because it's just it, it's. You can still have it, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to tinker around with this type of stuff. Um, that's if you want to make frequency medicine, for example. If oh, you, that's interesting. So you can use like for homeopathy kind of stuff. Yes, pretty much it's, it's quantum homeopathy, if you will. Like oh, you could literally, you could put a lemon in there and a glass of water and then you'll have the lemon frequency in the water or you take a silver coin and some piece oh, of frankincense, you have the frankincense that's frequency cool. in the silver I, I would play around with that. Of course, you know what I would do. I would put some danger coffee in it and I would just put that frequency in everything. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so those are the, the different radiuses and then uh, it, it works like a quantum sun, if you will, so it really goes into all directions, but it's at core, it's the strongest. So the closer you move towards it, yeah. the more you feel the effect and can measure the effect. Can you get too much? I mean, I have this triple, triple, I don't know what you call it, triple mega quantum block. This is yeah. the most powerful one, right? And this is the one that's a kilometer? The infinity block. Yeah, so this one is more than a kilometer because you have an upgraded version. Oh yeah, you right? gave me so. the, the 7X upgrade <laughs> on it. Uh, so would, should I put this like right under my bed in the middle of it? So I'm like sleeping in the middle of a vortex of... Power. I would not do that because then you probably would not really sleep that well because it, it may keep you up. You may sleep for two, three hours and then be fully awake. If you, wouldn't that be great? Because then you could go do shit. If, if, <laughs> if you want to do that much stuff, then <laughs> you can probably do that. Yeah. So go go play with it. But we recommend usually to not put it next to the bed or underneath next the to, bed. Next to? Okay, so like 10 feet away kind of a thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you're in a hotel room, then I, I would not put it next to the bed. Put it, you know, I don't know, oh, wow. on the, on the, on the desk stand, or something. Like there's always a, a wireless phone right there. And so... You're still okay on the desk. All right, I I can move well, it away from me. I don't even put it on the on the nightstand because that would personally be too too close for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it probably really depends on how deep someone usually sleeps, and and you know we should always be rather on the careful side recommending things, and that's why sure. I say rather uh, don't right. keep it there. And then, but you to your question, you can get too much of it, uh, especially if you're not used to energy work or meditation, yoga, and quantum what does, energy. What does that feel like? Uh, because you can start detoxing. Okay. Um, so if, if someone were to come that never had been exposed to energy work or quantum energy and puts their hand in there, probably relatively quickly at some point they may start sweating because detox reactions may, uh, may start. And at some point maybe their nervous system would also feel a little bit uncomfortable. Like, oh, this is just too much energy. Which isn't a bad thing. It just shows you, oh, really, I'm, I'm reacting to it. And that's, that's actually a positive thing. But then at that point, just take the hand out and, and drink a glass of water and, and, and you'll be fine. Okay. And the glass of water you drink, would you charge that in the block first? <laughs> well, in the case of the guy that just overwhelmed his nervous system a little bit, maybe not. But, <laughs> uh, but usually you can do it. And that brings me actually to a point I wanted to, to make, which is uh, fascinating. You know the Moto Institute, of course. Uh, these are the guys who make structured water snowflakes and ice crystals based on intentions in water. Yeah, they're pretty famous. Exactly. And so I think in the last show, they had just run the tests uh, um, on some of our tech and they were blown away by the amazing results they saw. And they said that the just the quantum block was able to improve water faster than anything they'd ever seen before and tested before. And they constantly get sent stuff, right? And, and so then they tested it themselves and they were so impressed that a month later they called me up and said, we would like to import your products to Japan and, and sell them here in Japan. And wow. we would like to be exclusive distributors, which usually we don't do these things. It's a big endorsement. Yeah, and then we said, we'll do it. And uh, 
that to me says much more than just their study because they actually really, I mean, they are really behind this stuff. And, and by the way, which is interesting, they also have a healer on their team. So on top of their scientific methods that they're using, they had this guy uh, test the block and, and the guy was blown away energetically because he was like, this is crazy, I can't believe it, this energy is amazing. And yeah, so they were just sold because of what they witnessed with their own eyes. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, I, I believe it. Uh, there, there's something interesting happening with this. Um, you mentioned it takes four minutes to charge something. It actually goes way quicker. The four minutes is what we recommend to the clinic to do the food allergy. Oh, that's for um, allergies. Uh, yeah, so in general, if you if you just want to charge your foods with an infinity block, I think 30 seconds, 45 seconds is usually enough to give it a really good charge. And, and will that last for like hours or days or permanent? Uh, that's a little bit hard to say. It depends also where you keep the stuff, but usually it would definitely keep the charge for quite some time. Most people usually charge it before consuming it, so then they don't really have uh, a problem with that. I'm just thinking is you, you buy a bunch of stuff, your groceries stick as many in there as will fit, and then toss them in the fridge and don't think yeah, about it. You yeah, can, you can do that too, It'll certainly. Right. Yeah. And then the people with a food allergy, you know, obviously there's something happening with the waveform patterns, that there's waveform patterns that um, create issues w mm -hmm. w within them, and then that these are being neutralized, and it, it seems so that... 30 seconds is not enough, but that you really need to dial up to like three or four minutes until, yeah, you have a neutralization of these. All right. Uh, let's give people the code, because guys, you know, anytime someone comes on the show to talk about their uh, their products, like you gotta give our listeners a, a discount. Leela Q, L-E-E-L-A-Q dot com, and use code DAVE10 and save 10% on the stuff. And I'm just going to be straightforward. It's not particularly cheap, right? You know, the, I, I don't know what the pendants or the, the cards cost. Those are the entry-level products. 145 mm -hmm. and you can yeah. get four capsules for 295 And I must say, yeah, you know, the blocks have a price point, but for what they do, <laughs> they it do is a lot. actually cheap. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I hear, yeah, like the, the blocks are, are very potent. And a lot of my high-power energy healer friends um, have a block at their house or two, or in my case, three plus a bunch of capsules and cards floating around because, well, thank you, you're generous and we're friends and, you know. <laughs> so, in fact, uh, Robin Benson, who came on the show years ago, uh, I think about travel hacking, who runs a place in Santa Fe, uh, for her wedding, um, you were nice enough to uh, help facilitate me getting a, a small quantum block that was uh, her wedding present um, when they weren't on the market yet, which was, uh, thank you. But it's that kind of a thing where, you know, people who know what they're doing with energy work are are picking these up because something's happening. Um, all right, so we, we've done our code, leelaq.com, use code DAVE10, and guys, seriously, pick up the pendant, which has charged, anodized, their titanium beads inside. Yes. Um, and so you open it up, there's the beads in it, and you can carry it with you. How big of a radius does this thing have? Uh, about one to two meters, okay. sometimes a little more. So you can put it in your purse if you wanted to. You can wear it or put it in your pocket or yeah. whatever. It's fine. I, you... The best is here, frankly. Yeah. Oops, uh, that was the microphone. I'm sorry. But uh, it's right actually where the heart chakra is because there's the biggest effect. But indeed, in the pocket is fine and your purse works as well. I, I, uh, I want to ask you some theoretical questions and bounce some ideas off you. Uh, it, it feels to me like we we know the the pixel size of reality uh, and that it's Planck's constant. So would you agree with that? Sort of, yeah. Okay. So, so guys, Planck's constant is this number that keeps showing up when you're doing advanced physics, uh, especially astrophysics and things like that. Um, and it's, it's a, a fixed constant. And when you... Uh, uh, when you look at that, it's basically the smallest measurable unit of, of matter. And so when you want to collapse waveforms, which is this all quantum now, you want to collapse a waveform into reality, uh, we believe that it requires an observer. Uh, who the observer is, I'm going to argue it's subcellular components, the first ones to see it. We would, a lot of people would say, well, it's humans. Uh, the problem is a, a third of a second after something happens, our brain gets the first wiggle that something happens. So the brain isn't the observer because the mitochondria already saw it. 
so something collapses it, but when it collapses from a quantum waveform of probability into reality, um, then we know that there's these essentially the pixels are the smallest units of matter that we can measure. So if we're living in a simulation, which I would probably well, we are living in a simulation from our percep our perspective of it because our user interface is tuned that way. Uh, it it feels like what we're doing with uh, Leela Quantum and and what a lot of the energy healing techniques are doing is they're going into basically the system behind what's creating the pixels and saying let's manipulate the waveforms so that when they they collapse into pixels or into you know measurable reality. Um, into something that 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 exists that is still ninety nine point nine percent empty, but at least you can you can you know, measure the 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 atom. Even though if you look inside the atom, it's still all empty in there. Um, is that how you think this works? Like we're going in and and editing waveforms in quantum reality. Well, I think your explanation of that is is great. I try to just offer a different way to look at it. That's how I perceive it and have experienced it. That everything is consciousness. There's only one consciousness that is constantly moving and expressing itself. And um, then there are indeed these different dimensions, right? And I just want to get into the 3D dimension now because that's what, you know, that's this reality here, right? Um, How many dimensions do you think there are? Infinite. And I tell you why? Because consciousness is infinite call it god call it consciousness and certainly not the god that's sitting on the clouds right it's 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 just infinite consciousness and since it's infinite consciousness of everything there's infinite possibilities it couldn't be any other way but i think you know from our observable perspective there may be nine dimensions um i get 13 but all right i'll, I'll give you that yeah so you know it uh, i think it depends always on how you look at it Right, we have seven main chakras, but then there's even more chakras. Right, yeah. there can, there are chakras in the hands and the feet, and you can go on and on. Even up here, you have the eighth and ninth yeah. chakra, and and so on. So there's always different ways to look at it, but I think ultimately there's of everything infinite possibilities. Um, but it may go too far, but the point is really that here, this is the material world that is sort of operated by consciousness still, but we're interacting in this physical reality. And with qu pure quantum energy like this and some other methods, you can influence matter and energy really on a below subatomic level. And then if changes are promoted on that level, they can ripple through, through the physical. That's how I would describe it um, and knowing that none of us can actually describe it because it's well, what about Roman I mean, doesn't he have a description of this and of what? Roman your energy healer guy isn't he seeing all this stuff and saying that that's a smurf and that's an alien or however he does it yeah I think he would probably describe it in a in a similar way so in a similar way to what you were saying okay yeah, the the people I've worked with when we talk about it there there's there's always fuzziness around the edges. Um, one of the, the lineages I've studied with, um, the guy actually taught a uh, hundred or so people how to do astral travel and said, just go out there and write down what you see. And he didn't tell them anything. And then he compared notes from all hundred of them to make you know, like a map of, of it. And it's funny if you send a bunch of explorers out, you know, some people find valleys, some people find peaks, and some people find rivers, and then they come back, and you, that's how you make a map, right? That's how we made the original maps of the planet, except probably we just got them from the, the uh, society that was here before us. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's how we got them. But anyway, we like to tell ourselves that we made new maps that way. Uh, so um, I think we can still do that for the, the quantum and the energetic realms and whatever dimensions. And um, Joe Dispenza is doing work on that. Uh, we're doing some work on that at 40 Years of Zen. And, you know, people, people are starting to realize that there's repeatable patterns to these other things, even though they're hard for us to sense. It doesn't mean they're not there. And I, I don't know that anyone I've met uh, has a full map of, you know, you do this in quantum and then this happens. Um, but there are people all over the planet working on it. And we have enough data. We have enough processing. We even have AI, which can be used for good in this case. 
like to help to understand what what patterns are in there that we don't see. So I'm I'm pretty hopeful that our quantum awareness stuff and our ability to manipulate quantum fields is going to improve humanity. Is it? So with the stuff that we do, um, yes, because this cannot be man- used for manipulative purposes because we're really operating with a pure quantum energy field. Like if if I you know, you could even transmit frequencies, right? Or you can copy frequencies. But if you took a fear frequency as an example, or some poison that you put in, then that frequency would get neutralized because it would be harmful uh, to life or consciousness. That that's just the way it works. It's just the nature of the field. It's nothing that we did to it. It's just the nature of it, which actually made us do this in the first place. Otherwise, I don't think we would have made our technology available to people because if, if they could use it for nefarious purposes, it, it would be detrimental. Now, there's a lot of other things in regards to quantum that people are working on, so I can't speak to all of what they're doing and will be doing, so that's I can just focus really on what I know about this. Okay. One of the reasons that I I named this field biohacking, it comes from my experience as a computer hacker. So computer hackers said, well, hey, Bill Gates, we don't like it that you won't tell us what's in there. Um, I'm talking about Microsoft Windows operating system. If you thought I meant something else, sorry about that. So, (laughs) Oh, yeah, nowadays. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, um, so they're like, if this this represents security problems. In fact, it could be really harmful for me to use something from, you know, Bill Gates because there's a lack of disclosure. You can't see the source code. And the answer is, well, just trust me. And it turns out a whole antivirus software industry arose from the just trust me because it turns out that there was massive holes and undiscovered problems. And that's there's still an issue with all software, especially operating systems. So hackers are like, screw that noise. Why don't we just make our own operating system? And they created Linux where they got together and everyone can see every bit of source code. So you know what's in there. And that was uh, something where everyone said, this can't happen. Why would anyone do that? Lo and behold, right now, most people listening to this conversation are listening to it via uh, components of technology using Linux as part of their stack. And that took 25, 30 years. So with biohacking you know are we going to figure out you know what's in there and are we going to be able to to use this new quantum systems for the benefit and with transparency the benefit for each other versus um you know letting someone use it for bad which goes to my next question like if, if if we had your mirror image you know an upside down world and we had like darth leela uh who who was hell bent on doing bad things you know like the government um, are you concerned about misuse of quantum fields? Not in in the way yeah, of these pure not quantum. Not for you guys. Yeah, yeah. No, but the for others. So the pure quantum energy really cannot be manipulated. It's just. But, but aren't you know, what you're doing? <laughs> no, no. Okay. No. Um, so you could not use it to manipulate someone. You cannot use it to for any. Ne- negative, I mean, in that case, negative is really not the right word. It would be harmful or destructive harmful, right. purposes. So if we were to be bad guys, the worst thing we could do with this is to take it off the market. <laughs> okay. And uh, and uh, because then it wouldn't be available. Because what, what it actually, and we didn't really get into this because we've been so focused on the physical studies and all of that, but the Hawkins scale, for example, guys, yeah. David Hawkins, Power versus Force, look it up. Um, I, I Google, use that regularly, yeah. Yeah, Google the, the, the consciousness scale because this can unlock more of our consciousness. And that, that's actually the level at which it works and then it ripples through the physical like we talked about. But it, it cannot just by nature decrease the level um, of, of our consciousness. It can only increase it. So if I wanted to do bad, we would have to literally take it off the market as soon as possible, but right now the way we've done, and that was one of the reasons why we actually make this tech available with the blocks. In the old world, someone would have 
hidden this tech and not made it available because they would just keep producing products like the capsules and carts and stuff like that. But now everyone that has a block like that can actually also make a certain cards. Like I said, you know, you can take a silver coin and charge it with frankincense and, and things like that, right? So people can use it. It's out there now, it, you know. Okay, so <laughs> you, you, you sort of open source a quantum technology, so to speak, although you, you aren't telling sort us of. exactly mm -hmm. how you make it. So that, and that, yeah. that's all right, you, that, that's well within your rights. Uh, now, I'm, I'm sort of wondering, you know, do I need a, a, a quantum firewall? like a, a quantum antivirus, given all the other nonsense that bad actors might be doing out there? That is it, pretty is, is much. That, I, mm -hmm. I'm kind of getting a sense, I never thought of that until now. Um, but uh, even asking that question, uh, uh, you know, a 15, 20 years ago, I would have been like, what the hell? Uh, but I, I do know that there are bad people with abilities who do bad things, right? And they do it to companies, they do it to people, and you know, they, they just, I don't know, they're sociopaths. I, I, it's hard for me to understand their motivations because it's not, it's alien to me. Uh, so um, having tech that helps to protect your energy system seems like a good idea. In, in regards to all these, I call them broad spectrum efforts, mm -hmm. uh, in regards to what you just described, this definitely helps. And, and EMF is probably the most visible for yeah. people, um, but then there's certainly other methods as well. If we're getting into the more very targeted ones, I think there's tech out there where also this won't be able to uh, to mitigate it, but yeah. you know all the broad spectrum stuff. Yeah, you should be fine, and actually more because some of that works on a very subtle level, right? You know, fear, for example, is being used as a tool to get large groups of people in a fear that they do certain things and behave in certain ways. But if you're unlocking more of your consciousness, meaning you're more expanded and more tuned in, fear is like you know, it just bubbles that way yeah. and you, you don't absorb it that same level, yeah. so it helps in that way as well. It might make you more dangerous. I mean, who knows what you might do. <laughs> the question is to so, whom, so, right? So, <laughs> subtle plug for Danger Coffee. <laughs> That's why it's called Danger Coffee. Yeah. It's like, who knows what you might do? <laughs> the right thing, probably. <laughs> I love that. Wow. All right. That, that's fascinating. Um, it, it's something I've been thinking about more. And in the, the realm of computer security, which you know something about, which I know a lot about because I was you know, VP of cloud security at a public company, um, you have like broad scale threat protection. So you have an antivirus software package installed and you have a firewall, like the things that are going to stop most pedestrian things. But if you're an elite level hacker, like, well, I wanted to get to, you know, that CEO. So I sent, you know, a very targeted email that looked like it came from someone who he knows with a, an attachment that would be there that had a zero day vulnerability. And so a good hacker or a three letter agency can get to almost anyone uh, via these types of, of abilities, depending on how much they're willing to spend to get to them. Um, so if you're, you know, a victim of uh, targeted energetic threats, well, you probably need a set of energetic ninjas to go, you know, do battle in the 17th dimension. I have no idea. Uh, but uh, for just the pedestrian, you know, gunk uh, that gets inserted in energetic reality, okay, Lila Quantum is, is doing something on that front aligned to like basic threat protection stuff. Yes, and it can be calibrated on the Hawkins scale pretty much by anyone that has these abilities or, or methods or it's very advanced in, in kinesiology. So uh, yeah, it's, it's in essence, it's a high consciousness field. That's how you can also describe it. And quantum energy, you know, it's just a word in the end of the day, you know, we could, could have called it ether energy. We could have called it a high consciousness field. It's describing the same thing in the, you know, and, and I think we, we, we try to get it across what, what we mean by that. Very, very cool. Uh, Philip, thank you for coming back on The Human Upgrade, for sharing the new studies that just came out on Lila Quantum. Guys, lilaq.com, code DAVE10, if you want to give it a try. And I, I got to say it, you know, I, I kind of don't like it that it works because it, it means there's a whole bunch of stuff we don't know about reality, but I like it that it works because it works. And that's that's always the cutting edge of biohacking. We haven't figured out the why, but we can test it. And you've talked about you know, five different ways of testing it. So kudos for bringing something new and, and hard to talk about into the world. I appreciate you, brother. Thanks a lot for having me on. Appreciate it. Guys, 
if you like the episode, I would be so thankful if you would go out there and leave a review for it, or even more thankful if you went and you picked up your copy of Smarter Not Harder. If you order the book right now, it helps other people discover the book because it creates a big wave of support for a book that teaches you stuff. And I do mention some things about quantum technologies in the book. And if you're thinking, huh, this is interesting, you can, not even counting the discount by using code DAVE10, you can go to leelaq.com and you can, you can start feeling what this is like for you for under 150 bucks. And it, yes, it does go up from there, and that's the nature of things, but it works. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. The Human Upgrade.